Picture this. It's a cool summer morning. You just wake up and you eagerly are racing downstairs into the basement. A copy of Jack and Daxter is waiting for you. It's unopened and just ready to be played for the first time. You pop the disc in and you instantly know what you're playing is a magical experience. You remember that same thing happened with Mario 64 and Spyro and a bunch of other games. You ever miss that? You ever just look at the state of the industry and just see all sorts of shit and games, layoffs, and just the general vibes of it all and kind of lose that magic? Well, I'd say it's time to find that magic again. I'm not gonna lie, I've found it harder and harder to pick up a game these days and get that same feeling of wonder and pure joy that I used to get when I played certain games when I was a kid. And it's not that I'm just getting older and that's just what happens. No, I genuinely believe that you can still have those same magical experiences, but it just takes more effort to get there. You have to be on the lookout for the type of games that used to give you that feeling. And man, let me tell you, the big catch hits about every note that I am looking for when I am talking about a magical game. And the game's not even fucking out yet. So, some backstory first. I know you're all thinking like, what the hell am I looking at? And, and what do you mean it's, it's not out yet? It sounds like you've already played it and love it. So what gives? What you're looking at is actually just a free demo of a game that is set to release next year. A game that originally got its legs from a Kickstarter campaign, and they've now reached the point where they have put out this little side adventure called The Big Catch Tackle Box as kind of an appetizer to the main game release. And it's not really your traditional demo where, I don't know, you can only go and maybe play an hour or so before running out of stuff to do. No, like this is essentially a full on large chunk of the game that on its own could even stand to be like a solo release, I think. I, I probably spent over 10 hours completing it and I'm honestly amazed at what is here given that you could just go freely download this right now. The only reason I even found out about this was I just saw some YouTuber I follow on Twitter uh, retweet one of the trailers and what I saw it just had me instantly rushing to the Steam page to check this out. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> how have I missed out on this? This shit looks awesome. It's so funny again, like how that works. These days there's so many games and, and so many people probably have been making your dream game and you might just not even know about it because there's just so many damn games out there. It's just hard to get your image out. Now, when I mention that you need to go out of your way and find a game that brings your joy for gaming back, I really just want you to keep an eye out for things that really matter to you most in games. Like for me, I absolutely love movement in games. It, it doesn't really matter the genre. I love the feeling of moving around and having like the act of moving alone facilitate a majority of the fun in a game. This is why I love games like platformers. I absolutely love Smash Melee because of the movement in that game. Extreme sports games like SSX, Skate, Shredders, all that stuff, right? Like this also has expressive and creative creative movement, and so I know to keep my eyes open for those type of games. I also know <laughs> it's exceedingly rare that we get these type of games from large modern AAA companies anymore, and so I kind of need to go out of my way to find people who are tapped into lots of different indie spaces who also kind of like these things and who can help keep these types of games on my radar. Now, this project, as you might be able to tell, is a throwback to the era of animal mascot-based platformers. It's, it's actually so crazy to me that Sony is finally bringing this back in some form with the new Astrobot on the horizon, but I'm not gonna lie, I think I like my games better when the mascot is not just like a walking advertisement for Sony consoles. Regardless, Astrobot looks sick. Anyways, as we get more and more games every day now, it's basically at the point of oversaturation for the main gaming crowd. And this is where you turn to indies, right? I know, I, I hate the moniker of the indie title sometimes. It's used as somewhat degrading and, you know, can only mean certain types of games, maybe smaller game sizes or stuff that's like artsy fartsy, but <laughs> no. Now indies serve to fill the void left by the rest of the hyper-corporatized gaming industry. You know, I used to as a kid be able to go 
buy all sorts of games that I felt had some sort of magical nature about them from front-facing studios like Naughty Dog or Sony or whatever. And I, and I would say it's a lot rarer that we get that now. Like, yes, obviously there are still examples, but in general, it really is left to the indies to create the stuff that fits the mold that I'm talking about. This genre of game just has so many things that like modern games have just lost. They've just stopped doing. It, it actually feels adventurous because there is basically no guidance. Everything you see is up for you to make of something and explore. It's not afraid to be empty in spaces. It, it requires something from the player. Things just feel extremely, extremely interesting because I really just sort of don't know what's going to come next. Like, I'm just out here surfing the sands and seeing what's going to happen. And of course, I want to get back to talking about movement here. Movement is something I feel is so heavily neglected in favor of immersion or realism nowadays. Mostly all your third-person character games, like, they kind of control the same. Not exactly the same, but you know what I mean. They're heavily animation-based, and they compromise the core feel of, like, actually playing, making sure that, like, a player's foot turns at a right angle that, you know, and this works in real life. There are exceptions, right? Like, <laughs> Elden Ring was a good one. You can, like, double jump on a horse and instantly turn and pivot, and it feels, like, snappy, right? And that's, that's the stuff I'm looking for. But that goes to another extreme in things like old school platform style games where the character is completely at the forefront of the experience. And the amount of detail and love that goes into like all the squishes and, and stretches and stuff that like make the act of moving alone feel good, it's just so important. You have all these little like fun idle animations and, and expressiveness and it's just so playful and engaging. I think this is one of the most important signs of a great game. And it's, it's where you can just instantly get thrown into the game move around for a few seconds and realize like yep <laughs> this this is gonna be good it's it's like mario 64 right like that first moment they let you loose in the castle grounds and you just start moving mario the fun has already begun like right there tackle box has that same feeling which you get right away when you're thrown into this tutorial zone. Your character can slide, side flip, spin jump, ground bounce, wall run, gain and lose momentum, like all in combination with the fishing rod grapple hook. And this, this all leads to being able to get in this flow state while platforming. And then all of these options lend themselves to engaging level design that not only, you know, has its standard flow through the levels, but also allows for creativity and expressive movement. You can get to certain spots quicker, you know, skip sections, perform saves that can stop you from falling off an edge and like the way the world is crafted really lends itself to this exploratory mindset. The main zone that you get to explore in Tacklebox, it's essentially set up in this open world or more so open zone style of platformer, which we haven't really gotten many of those that feel the way this does. I would say, think of Hyrule Fields in Twilight Princess, or the openness you get in Shadow of Colossus, but like, sprinkled around are these ruins and structures where you'll do most of your platforming. What I really like about this is that because the world is set up in this way, again, think like Shadow of the Colossus, it creates this sense of mystery and intrigue about the landscape. You can see structures off in the distance every way you look, but it's also vast and empty, and there's like, why is this bridge here? This bridge has fallen here. These ancient runes are here. Who who used to live here? You know, it's, it's almost painting like an ominous and reflective tone throughout the land. It's just, it's super, super curious and intriguing. The structures all vary in size and importance as well, so you'll have like, you know, smaller sections that might not be any more than a few fallen ruins and a couple rocks and maybe some collectibles to pick up, but you'll also have these absolutely grand temples or towers that feel entirely like they are almost their own dungeon or zone alone. I can't tell you how impressed I was going over to the largest structure on the map and being able to spend over an hour or two alone just in that single section because of the sheer amount of platforming and exploring and collecting that was possible in that space. Not only are there all sorts of different structure sizes and locations, but the variety in the actual platforming at each of these spots is it's really incredible. The core movement system is all Always the foundation of the design for each location, but then to spice things up, you have added systems that elevate the mechanics you already have. You have things like slingshots, slippery surfaces, balance beams, ropes, uh, grindable ledges, you know, hookable platforms and levers and stuff like. There is so much going on, but it's also so hyper-focused. And the team clearly knew to heavily 
you know, focus the core gameplay around its base mechanics and then work to elevate them through these other systems. And it leads to a final experience, well, I guess final in the sense of this little tackle box side thing that showcases a focus level often not found in many popular or AAA games that release these days. I don't want to show too much, but it's hard not to with just how many fun little ideas they throw at you throughout the game. Oh, and uh, yeah, I guess I should mention at this point, this is a collectathon as well, uh, if you could not tell for some reason. So this game does feel like my primal urge to collect and hoard shiny things that make me feel good when grabbing them. The game absolutely kills it with the collection celebration as well. Something that I find more difficult to find in games is is like really well done UI. And so this is, this is something that you gotta kind of look for now, right, to find, but holy shit, man. Look at these UI assets in this game right now. The trinket style collectible counter that you have, the health gauge, the little compass, these do not feel annoying to have on the screen. Or do they, you know, feel like they were designed to feel extra minimalistic and sterile because they just didn't actually have a good skin to them. No, these are elements that sit naturally in the world, look like somebody within the game crafted them, and also, if you don't want them on the screen all the time, then you have the ability to hide and unhide them, almost as if you're like pulling them out of your pocket or something. This applies to the menus and other UI as well, like the title screen. This just screams old school era platformer. The in-game text elements and signage, like this all feels good to pull up and read. It almost feels again, kind of like it's going for this Legend of Zelda thing, which is good, right? I think above all else, when it comes to finding something that's going to bring out like the purest joy from you in game form is, is when you just instantly feel great about a game through its vibes alone. When I played the initial trailer, uh... <laughs> I, within like five seconds, I, I almost knew for certain that this was going to be something special for me. The way that I resonate with like the Y2K, PS1, PS2 era aesthetic and the atmospheric track that's playing, like I knew this game was about to be all the types of stuff that I really, really enjoy and, and vibe with. And then it just keeps going and more and more things are showing up where it's like, dude, there's, there's no way. I'm not just going to play this with a smile on my face the entire time. You're telling me it's got Twilight Princess aesthetic mixed with like a platformer that has has a PSX style visual thing going on and music that is extremely atmospheric and contemplative like the quiet forest song from Kirby 64 yes the soundtrack right I haven't mentioned it but dude some of these songs I just I just want you to listen to these You can just feel the atmosphere oozing from the track, dude. <laughs> just fucking oozing. Um, you know, the atmosphere, the combination of the music, the visuals, the movement, it creates a world that is just inherently fun to be in. I'm, I'm not lying, man, when I, when I tell you this. I, like, I loaded the game up for the first time, and when I got placed in the little tutorial section, I, I straight up just walked around, <laughs> listened to the music, and I, I didn't leave this place for probably like 30 to 45 minutes uh, just because of how fun <laughs> being in that environment is. I'm sure you can just play this and get out of there within five, you know? It's, it's just teaching you the base mechanics. No, I just, I wanted to be in there and, and soak it all in, man. This shit's awesome. I almost feel like this idea is sort of inherently integrated into the design of the game as well, right? It's the whole idea, you know? Your goal is climbing up these structures to reach and obtain certain goals. And, and once you get to the top of structures, lots of them even have little platforms set up for you to just sit on top of and look out at what you just overcame. You know, the, the goal of reaching the top of the summit is great, but so is the journey of doing it. And you'll have the same moments during the climb where you also just feel compelled to rest for a moment and take it all in before continuing up. It's a really self-reflecting way to design a satisfying game loop. And like, sure, you know, there's usually a reward or a collectible to get once you get to the top. But honestly, you just feel good 
in yourself for being able to overcome the obstacles in your way. You don't need the external reward because you already feel great internally. The simple joy of overcoming a challenge itself, it's, it's just not something we see at the forefront of games core design as much these days. So it's refreshing to experience it here. I do wonder what the reach of games like this are nowadays, you know, for like modern crowds. You will fall and you will repeat sections a lot. You'll, you'll have to come back to locations to find things you've missed. You know, these, these collectibles, sometimes they're hidden in pretty hard spots to find, but I don't know. I just find it part of the game, part of the journey. It, it is to miss things. It is to come back. You know, it's a fine line to balance though. This is because it 100% could get annoying, but if done right, it's it's hard to feel annoyed when the movement is just so tight and responsive and the world is just so fun to be in. So coming back to, to something, it's less of a nuisance, but just an opportunity to stay within the creative world that the devs have crafted. And it's such a it's such a unique concept, right? To have the fishing is the forefront of the game's lore, you know, like having what seems to be a species where fishing is basically like a religion to them, or at least it's kind of like sacred in a way, right? It's almost like a rite of passage for you to catch your first fish in the tutorial section. And, and you know, then again, the entire game is you going out and training in this fish surfing collecting way. It's crazy creative. I'm not exactly sure how much narrative is going to be in the main game when it fully releases, but just in the little small details we get here, it's it's enough to establish something that I would love to learn more about. You know, what other characters are we gonna interact with? What what does the fishing culture fit into like a more grand world if we expand on that in the way that the trailer kind of alludes to? What other types of environments are we gonna see? I truly mean it when I say this game became like my most anticipated game to look out for, and I didn't even know about this shit until a couple days ago. It's, it's, there's so much to look forward to. Oh, and yeah, I don't know if you noticed uh, in one of those past clips, but they do have the option to switch up what the visuals are like, right? Like, I love being able to flip from the modern look to a pixelated PS1 style aesthetic with, like, the texture warping and all that. You can really tell the team vibed heavy with that era of games, and I think the reasons for why explain themselves. Something else from that era that we have gone away from that you can kind of see here as well is, is the style of lighting that is more prevalent in older games. I won't pretend to be a lighting expert, but I do sometimes feel like modern games can get a bit stale with the way we rely on modern lighting techniques that, again, tend to aim for realism over most else. And there is something of a lost art when it comes to just good old-fashioned baked lighting and manually having lighting within textures themselves. I find games like this tend to have a more bright feel to them, even in dark environments, right? Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how to describe it. Think of like being out at night in the middle of winter and it and it's snowing and because it's snowing the whole sky is still holding on to light from other sources so you still have like this lightness around like legit that's the type of vibe i'm talking about and i really enjoy that about the game the glowing feels comforting and again it's just kind of magical i've, I've said that so many times but it's, it's true it's just like the rest of the game as well man I assume if you've made it this far, you you also at least probably have some level of interest in this game. So I'm telling you, please just just go give it a shot. You might as well. If you end up vibing with it, uh, wishlist the game. Like, support the devs. These projects, projects like these, are really the lifeblood of the gaming scene. So much of the games industry right now, particularly the AAA studios, they've all gotten so lost in the corporate pool of greed. And it's almost at the point where you can't expect much anymore until something changes with the state of who actually runs the creative process of making the game. But again, until that thing does change there, these style of projects and teams are like the pillars holding the industry up. Even if you might not click with this project, please find something that brings you that magical feeling that you used to get playing games. That feeling is what I want people to feel more. That is what is sometimes kind of hard and elusive to find these days within the modern games industry. Like I said, you, you kind of have to be on the search for it. But if you know where to look, if you know the right places, if you know the right people to keep you updated, these games almost seem like they'll find you.